So, uh, good afternoon, everybody, and I've got not much voice left, so I'll do my best. Um, I'm Barbara, obviously. I'm not Harry. Um, I've been involved with DSDM forever, and before DSDM was invented, I always worked this way. And it's quite frightening to get caught up with a method, because I've always tried to avoid methods. But I helped create DSDM in 94, um, and I've been using it full-time ever since, both at work and, depressingly, for my husband also at home. Um, and I've helped develop DSDM, and I feel passionately that it just works really well. Um, I do most of my work in sort of corporate transformations, and I'm currently the DSDM director for product innovation. Um, my name is Adi van Benneken. Um, I got into rapid application development in 1994, and it, it went like this. I was doing, who has been technical designer in the past in you now consultancy firms? I was, I was a technical, making technical design. And the thing is, they said to me, you're being part of, you're a part of a technical designing team. And I was sitting in a room with three other, two other people, the three of us, and we were no team. Because in the room next to us, there was a functional design team, three people, also not a team, but just three people doing stuff. And we got each of us from one of the people in the other room stuff. And I thought, this is not what I like. And then I went to, at the time, we called it the commercial management. And I asked them, I, I said it like this, you know, this is who I am, and this is what I don't want, and I don't have a clue what I do want. And then uh, I, I got a manager, and he said, I have something for you. And, and he brought me into the world of rapid application development in 1994. And in 1997, I made a step to DSDM because, it, you know, for me it was a sort of a logical step. I got, uh, you can see it on the screen, into the consortium, actively involved. There was a chapter of the DSDM in the Benelux at the time. And uh, I remember being, you know, driving home through the countryside, lovely countryside, Hardingsveld, Giesendam, in the Netherlands. And it was uh, a Thursday evening, uh, uh, 6.30, and I got a call from Mary asking me, can you go on a set Saturday morning to, next Saturday, to Salt Lake City to speak on a conference? And I said, yeah, well, I can. And I was the next day, I was you know, working on this international you know, rollout of websites together with Per Magnus, who was also here somewhere, Per Magnus. Yeah, there. He was there. And we were you know, in the, in, on that Friday making calls, trying to arrange stuff. So I went you know, with a few boxes with CDs and books and stuff to Salt Lake City because I thought you know, there, would, was, you know, there would be a conference and I had to speak on a conference like this. And it was just 17 guys in a very small room. Very warm room, and uh, after a couple of hours, and especially after two days, then it even you know, feels like smaller because the smell gets different <laughs> from the moist, right? But I love it ever since, and I think for me, Agile is, uh, and I'm going to speak a little more about this, Agile is for me uh, common sense. For me, it's, I always say it's structured common sense, and Ron Jeffries had a beautiful phrase, uh, Agile is uh, common sense and uncommon discipline. And I think that's what we will come back to be a little later on. Um, I'm also chair of the Agile Consortium Benelux. Similar to the DSDM Consortium, we have a close working relationship together. And we're trying to expand from the Agile Consortium perspective, Agile uh, up to the next level of innovation, quality, and awareness in the market. OK. So what we want to talk about is particularly corporate Agile. So talk a bit about how we got here, sort of the, the origins and the future, particularly focusing on this, this concept of grown-up Agile. Um, there are different types of Agile. There's, there's very small, simple pieces of work. They're easy to do. But the focus of this presentation is, is Agile in the wider context of projects in a corporate culture, which is a different sort of world. And what's lovely with this conference is to see that we've got lots of people here that are looking at the strategic, the project, the program level, rather than a room full of just developers that want to talk pure techniques. So it's talking about the Agile the community in Europe, DSDM, where are we going, and Agile, where's it going? And this will be interesting because we've not practiced this together, but I'm sure it'll be fine. We're Agile, and we're aiming to finish about 10 yeah. past. We'll fight afterwards. Yes. <laughs> So, <laughs> so, looking back to the early days, um, years ago my, my unofficial job title was Rad Mum, 
And I think now my probably my unofficial title is Agile Granny. So even I've grown up. But when we started doing this in the early days of 94 and before that, sort of probably late 80s, it was a very different world. And to be perfectly honest, we had to fight for everything. And because we were fighting for some space for Agile, and we were fighting the traditional people, and we were fighting the organisation, we were fighting the standards, we had to be quite stroppy and we had to be quite difficult. And we did some things that in hindsight, looking back on it now, we probably shouldn't have done. So what I'd like to do is first of all make a public apology. Um, is there anybody in the room that's a business analyst? Not many. Well, not many going to own up. Okay. When we created DSEM version 1, we got rid of you. <laughs> Sorry. We were wrong. Um, because when we were fighting this agile, uh, to, to make this agile space, business analysts were a major part of our problem. These were these Rottweilers in the doorway that wouldn't let us go and talk to the business. So, you know, you can't talk to them, you have to talk to me. So we decided that the problem was the business analysts, and we ditched them. And it took us quite a few years. Um, it was a turn. When we did the DSTM a turn version, we finally admitted we were wrong, and we brought them back into the fold, because we recognised that business analysts do a lot more than analyst programmers did. So welcome back, business analysts. In fact, now you're getting your whole new handbook for yourselves. So, I mean, unusually, you know, we recognise that the, the issues with project, with, with business analysis, with the whole project structure, and that's one of the major differentiators. But like anybody growing up, when you do things as a child or as a teenager, um, you look back on it and you're not necessarily very proud of that. So I'm quite pleased to come clean about the analyst thing because I think we did do you a disservice. And actually, you know, it shows how important analysts are to the way we do things. So what we find as you move the clock forward is that it's no longer about agile in a corner fighting for its space. It's a very, very different world. And what we've actually got now, I don't know why it's not merging, never mind. Okay, what we've got now is just one world, and it's the world of business. Um, and basically, we've got projects that are more agile, and we've got projects that are more traditional, more structured, but we've come a long way from the concept that agile is binary. In 94, it was binary, you're either agile or you're not. You're with us or you're against us. It's not like that anymore. It's about a single world. Um, my slides aren't working. But it's actually a single business world and you just choose where you want to be on the agile spectrum. And it's trying to get that concept across to people. Um, it's okay to be a bit traditional. In fact, sometimes it's safe to be a bit traditional. I wouldn't go the whole hog necessarily, but some projects need more structure than others. So simple Agile projects are relatively straightforward. A couple of blokes in a garage doing a website for their mate. It's very Agile. But if you move into the corporate world, most of the corporate projects aren't that simple. You hit all sorts of complexity that you have to deal with. We also deal with projects that are not just about IT. So one of the discussions I always raise with the Agile Manifesto, and I know Ari feels the same, the Agile Manifesto says it's about working software. No, it isn't. It's about working solution. It's not just about software. Most projects are business change with a bit of software, or sometimes they're just business change with no software whatsoever. So we've got business change only, and we've got business change in IT. But you very rarely do just an IT project in isolation. So it's complicated. This was going to be a beautiful reveal slide, but that's not working either. Um, so you sit in the middle, and in a complex corporate project, you've got all these pulls, all these tugs on what you need to do. You've got these constraints. You have formal contracts. I mean, if anybody's done you know, an agile contract, I know there's some work going on here, but most agile, most contracts are very traditional. Procurement departments are incredibly, incred incredibly traditional. Um, and it's a fight to get an Agile contract. And I once did a training course for a group of procurement people, legal people, about contracts and Agile, and they said, we don't want this rubbish. 
We just need to know when do we sue. Which is quite depressing, but it's actually the way some commercial business works. We've got projects as part of a complex program. And part of that program may be fully traditional. And it might be extremely agile. So, you know, it's, it's complexity. We're not just working alone. We've got the fun and games of the business case. Whether it's done formally, and I'm working on a, a project at the moment where our analysts are doing the business case so that we can prioritise using benefits, which is the way it should be done. That's a mature organisation. For some organisations, it's just, yes, it's probably worth doing this. That's about as formal as it gets. But the business case is important, and it should be driving the project. We then have the corporate standards. It would be lovely to ignore them. And I must admit, when I'm transforming, I enjoy going around saying, why do you do that? Could we stop it? Is that really necessary? Where's the value? But I know, for example, our chairman used to work in the pharma industry. Pharmaceuticals, corporate standards, regulatory standards are non-negotiable. So it's no good saying, I'm sorry, we're agile. Uh, we're excused. Here's my note to excuse me. You have to work with them. And you have to find a way to do that. And it's going to make life more difficult. We've got constraints. The constraints of very complicated technology or constraints of communication. We've got risks. You know, we, we have projects with low risk. We have very high risk projects. Um, interestingly, I've worked in a number of organisations where you're constrained by the budget cycle. Well, you have to pitch for budgets in February. But we don't know what we want to spend them on. Well, you have to get the money ready. OK, give us some money to spend on stuff. Uh, no, we need a bit more than that. So you make something up, and then you have to sort of retrofit to the money you've just claimed. It's much more complicated. Um, what that means is that with these sorts of constraints, you end up with projects that have a very natural spectrum. So some projects are going to be able to be much, much more agile. Some projects you can actually work at the edge of chaos. Brilliant. If you're working for the likes of British Aerospace, we did some work for Rolls-Royce, um, you're not allowed to work at the edge of chaos. In fact, they were frightened of agile because they said they can't afford to be risky because people die. So those, those projects will lean you more towards more formality. It's annoying. But it's just a fact of life. We need to stop fighting against that. So this, this wonderful, complicated corporate cu culture is where DSTM was born. So we've got somebody who's come back today who was the chairman in the early days working in a corporate. So we had the, the British telecoms, the British Air, Airways, the British Rail, you know, the oracles, the, the complicated corporate cultures. That's where we particularly thrive. That's why we have the very strong project focus, because that's what we do. You know, that's what we focus on. So we focus on delivering agile projects, and we recognise that we can't just fight the organisations all our life. We've actually got to collaborate. We had an interesting discussion yesterday with Ian from France about the whole use of the word collaboration, because apparently in France it's not a particularly well-received word. But we need to collaborate, and we need to recognise, as somebody said to me just now, where do you need to fight, and where do you need to give in? And where are the bits in the middle where we perhaps need to talk about this? Because there are some things you can't change. There's some things I'll fight to the death to change, and there's some in the, in the middle where we need to negotiate. And we have to accept and work with the things we can't change. Oh, it's my slide on. Can... It's your slide Yeah, on. thank you. Yeah, that's fine. That's the only one. Um, they asked me to talk a little about you know, where it came from. And in 2011, when the manifesto was there, uh, uh, 10 years, we had a sort of celebration in Salt Lake City, a huge conference. And um, uh, I got a lot of questions, you know, interviews and that kind of stuff. What would you change in the manifesto? Just one word. Just one word. Uh, and I think um, the, the 70 people who wrote the manifesto, most of them were really die-hard programmers. And this is why software comes in and solution is not there. And I think that's the only thing. Because when we were there, you know, imagine this. You have a small room and 17 you know, self-convinced men who are aware. You know, they have their own 
method with them, their own theories, their own practices, and, um, and then they're all sort of different. So the natural behavior is that, you know, I'm going to explain to you why mine is better than yours, and you will try the other way around, right? We didn't. We tried to find common ground, and we started just with the word Agile, because what, what is it we are talking about? Who is, of you has ever read the Agile Manifesto? Uh, not all of you. Hmm. Okay. Um, so what we did was, you know, being open. And we, I remember uh, somewhere in those days, in the, in the, in, I think it was the, the, the first morning or something, the first afternoon, we explained to each other, okay, this is how it works from my perspective. And I remember that most of them said, oh, the DSDM, mm, that's heavy. They didn't use the word bureaucratic, but from their perspective, it was for most of them. But still, they were open. And um, we have been you know, talking for, let's say, a day and a half, really, on the content, just trying to find them. From the first you know, umbrella expression, Agile, we came to the first four you know, statements of the Agile Manifesto. And over the email, in the time after, we got, we got the 12 principles of valuable software. And it must have been like, two or three thousand emails going up and down, you know, with 17 people replying all, all the time. Um, and, and then I think what, what we were able to create there was a situation where you have, you know, at that moment, 17 different views, maybe 12, I think there were 12 methods. Jim Highsmith, has, did, he did write a book about it. Um, um, we tried to find common ground and we tried to find, and, and we were able to create a platform where you know, everyone could find s solutions to their questions and answers. Um, when we got together, we were talking about, okay, so, so what? You know, we've been away for 10 years now. What's the next step? The next step was that we will, would be together in three years. So that would be next year. So who knows what's coming up in, in, in 12 months? I don't know. We have another meeting again. Um, but the thing is, it's not done yet. You see some of the methods like DSDM working on the content and evolving all the time. And some of them are, you know, just the way they are. And people use them or not, or they use a little bit from this and a little bit from that. And I think it's not really an, you know, a problem whatever method you use. The vision and, and, and my statement here is that success of Agile, the way you do Agile, lies in the quality and the discipline you use for your agile techniques like time boxing and prioritization and uh, your daily stand-ups or weekly heartbeat sessions, whatever you do, just make sure you do them the right way with the right people at the right time about the right content. And the moment you do this, it gets less important which method you use. The method is very handy when you talk about uh, you know, in a, in a process together, a project where we have this, the, you know, the same words for the business analyst and we have the same words for the phases we use and that kind of, that kind of stuff. Um, there's a lot coming up. I think uh, um, DSDM was, as I recall, the only what I call full delivery method. Um, in, uh, the rest was, in, from my point of view, very focused on the production process of the software. Well, that's great. It can all work together. Uh, we see beautiful projects with Prince2, DSDM, and Scrum in one. It works brilliantly. And I think next step would be when we have a lot of benefits from working with Scrum or with Kanban or with DSDM in projects, the next level should be project portfolio management. And next step might be just running your business agile. And I know in the Netherlands we have internet banks, you know, where the, the organization is totally run business-wise. So there will be a lot of innovations, innovations coming up. And I think well, going back to the attitude on top where you're open and you share and you're able to innovate together and share your innovation with the rest of the community, we get Agile where it belongs. Um, it's, a, it's a very responsive way of delivering very uh, 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 good stuff with a lot of business value. And giving the fact that we are on our way to even in 2015 and 20, you know, shorter and shorter and shorter time to market of whatever product you are. I think that St Star Wars Episode 7 will be about agility in business. Will be about, you know, whatever you do, do it agile. I implement agile at this moment in time in marketing departments, for instance. So, and it works. And we have their solution development teams and we have the business 
we were always talking business and IT. As you know, is IT not business then? I, so it's more who is developing and who is the client. And when you do a marketing campaign or you have a marketing uh, program for the rest of the year, you can do it as agile. You know, it's even better when you do it agile because you know agile has so much benefits. So where episode seven will be all about, I'm not sure yet, but maybe business agility. Barbara. Okay, so <clears throat> in the spirit of sort of thinking more about being open and accepting, what we've got to look at is when you're, when you're setting up and when you're choosing how to do your Agile, first of all, what's the focus? So is it IT, IT with business change, or is it just business change? You've got to think about what level you're, you're looking at. Um, the interesting thing, you look at all the Agile approaches, or most of them, and team is just a given. Scrum does team, XP does team, DSDM does team. But it's when you get up to the next level, to the project, to the program, how are you going to do that? What have you got that will give you the control of a project above, say, an XP team or a Scrum team? And you've got to look at how complex is what you're trying to do. Um, are you working in a simple environment? Are you working in a very complex environment? So um, a few years ago, again, there was a lot of focus on, oh, you don't, you don't work out up front your technology, for example. You just let it emerge. Well, having worked on a complex telephony project across the globe, with bits being done in China, India, Finland, Europe. You don't just say to the teams, do your stuff, we'll bring it together, be good. And we'll do a bit of refactoring to make it work. You need some thinking, you need some structure. So thinking about the things behind your agile work will drive the way you, you manage it, the, drive your choices. So what we're seeing a lot more of is this concept of blended agile bringing things together. So again, in 94, 95, 97, DSDM was fighting everybody else. You don't want that, you want ours. Ours is better than theirs because we're changing. And what we're saying is that there are projects where one approach may be all you need, absolutely brilliant. There's other approaches where actually you need something else. It might be that you've got an agile approach you were hoping to use, but it's got gaps in it. Or it might be, one of the things we see a lot, is there's already an in-house Agile approach, but it's struggling. And as they try and scale it up, it's starting to fall apart. And that's where we need to blend in, perhaps, things from the other Agile approaches. Because one of the things I see is that we're Agile. We need to be, and we need to be seen to be, more flexible. There's been times in the past when we haven't been. We've been far too dogmatic. And then what happens is Agile fails, Agile takes the blame, and then you get the traditional gravity. Well, that didn't work. You know, so let's go back to the traditional way of working, because we've forgotten that that was a miserable failure. We'll just ignore the recent failure, and we'll go back to what's familiar, predictable failure. So we need to be smarter, and we need to blend things together more and be more open about doing this. So I don't think that it's any longer one size fits all. Sometimes it is, sometimes you're lucky. But I think actually blending Agile approaches together makes Agile far, far stronger. Pick the best of everything. Why not? It's all free anyway. Um, so build the best of both worlds for your particular circumstances. And every single organization has different circumstances. So it's about choosing what fits for you rather than somebody trying to fit a generic style that does most of what you want but has gaps. So we like corporate agile. I like a difficult life. I wouldn't know what to do with a simple enclosed project. I like a hard time. It's not just about agile. So it's about saying if we're going to work, if we're going to survive and grow in the corporate world, we've got to collaborate with existing standards. Prince 2 is fine. It's quite often the Prince2 project managers that are at fault. A bit like business analysts are fine. It was some of their historical behavior that was at fault. There's nothing in Prince2 that's anti-Agile. So I think Ari said this morning, you get people saying, can't do Prince2 with Agile. Of course you can. You just make it work Agile. Because a stage, you have Agile inside. You just don't put the disciplines at the very low level. We work with quality processes. CMMI, ISO, 
is not a problem. If you're looking at CMMI, Agile can provide a predictable process. It's moving you up to level two, level three. I've done DSDM in a CMMI five organization. The main complaint I got is, we've got to change our paperwork. Yep. Afraid you have, but it we passed. So done in the right way. This is not anti-agile, this is grown-up agile in a complicated world. And there is quite a lot of work going on with um, trying to develop agile-friendly contracts. We did, DSDM did one years ago. We're trying to get it up to date. So the simple answer, I think, to quote Obama is corporate agile projects, yes, we can. So I just took some pictures of agile project management with prints. The Agile Project Management Handbook, DSDM, Prints, ITIL, Agile PMO. This is all the corporate stuff, the governance stuff that we already do. And it's getting everybody to accept this is not the antithesis of Agile. This is Agile in a really tough, grown-up world where we can't drive everything that's done. And it's accepting it. I'm, <coughs> I'm very happy that we're, we're talking... When we talk about DSDM, we're talking about DSDM again. Uh, in the past, you know, when I got into it, it was DSDM, and then it, it changed into, uh, I don't know even how you pronounce it, a turn or a turn? A turn. A turn. And then we were looking at the manuals from the previous slide, and there was this little silhouette on it. And I was just, you know, talking to myself, saying, hey, is this a butterfly or is this a bird? I heard someone saying from the back, no, it's Superman. <laughs> and I thought, hmm, you know what's... And now it's DSDM again. That's what it is, and that's what it always has been. And I think DSDM has grown, like Barbara just described, uh, from a strong community, innovating, working, sharing best practices, the way I think we went from rapid application development and the rapid application development user groups to DSDM is now the same way of working next step. Um, we have uh, on the, the continental uh, mainland in, in uh, continental Europe, we have the Agile Consortium, similar, uh, not connected to one specific method. Same idea. And what we do there is trying to get communities connected. In this, we are working together with the DSDM Consortium. We have Mary Connect Agile coming up soon. Very soon, very soon. Um, this is a platform where we bring Agile communities together from across, uh, well, whatever we have a focus on Europe now. Um, and the Agile Consortium is at this moment expanding because it's not only that we try to connect all the Agile communities, we also you know, try to implement new chapters of the Agile Consortium. And every chapter has the same idea. You have locally, you have Agile communities. I think in the Netherlands alone we are formerly like six or seven. And we just what you do as a local chapter of the Agile Consortium is trying to connect, try to bring them together, and try to get the innovation going. Because every single Agile community is innovating. But sharing across those borders is difficult. Cross community sharing. And I think this is what we need to do. And this is what you can see. So we are working on chapters in Romania and Poland, Germany. Um, we are uh, in, in, in strong interaction with PMI in Poland at the moment. So. Um, oh, the Connect Agile is the, the one that's, that's, it's just a digital platform, a portal where you can, you know, connect to as an Agile community to share your events on a big calendar. So everyone will know that your event is going on and has an opportunity to, opportunity to visit it. Um, and I think we need to do this. We need to do that. We are here like, we have like 300, 350 people now, more or less. And, and I think, you know, you may be spread over like four, five, six, seven, eight Agile communities. And that's not a problem if that's your, the place where you go to, you know, to share your information and to innovate. But I would like to invite you all, you know, go to the websites of those organizations. <coughs> when Connect Agile is launched, I hope the DSDM consortium will inform you about this. And there you, then you will know that when you're on holiday in Krakow in Poland, you have the opportunity to visit the lovely Agile conference over there. And business analysts invited. So that's cool, <laughs> right? Um, uh, but also, it's like we have, you know, in the Netherlands, from where I live, it's like an hour drive to Antwerp. And they have an Agile Consortium in Belgium. We didn't know what they were doing. Now we do know because we share the information. We have it on one place. 
So that's just the fact that I can go there and meet people who present or are working in task, task forces on innovation. So I'd like to invite you all you know, to participate in the Agile community, which is you know, global at the moment. But I think everyone's experience, when you're open, everyone's experience is uh, very much appreciated and valuable to others. So please do so. This is just a snapshot of what's going on in Europe. And there's a lot, really a lot more. So try to get in touch, you know, Google around a little and connect as much as you can. Thank you. Barbara? I can see an opportunity for holiday tours here. Yeah, exactly. The big agile tour. <laughs> Okay, so, so DSDM, where are we going next? Well, taking into account this concept of being more open, more collaborative, um, the next version of DSDM working on as we speak is the DSDM Agile Project Framework. And this is part of the, the strategy for DSDM moving forward. So this new version, I think you may have seen there's a chapter. We're giving out a chapter of it, a sort of taster. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to take DSDM back to the core so if you look at something like the Etern Handbook, there are things in there that, are, whilst interesting, aren't particularly DSDME. I mean, we've removed things like lots of guidance on risk because with the best will in the world, go somewhere else. We're just focusing on what's, what's about DSDM, what value does DSDM add. So this core of DSDM will be applicable to any role, whether you're a developer, tester, analyst, visionary, business sponsor, or even a DSDM champion. It will give you what you need, the detail, to tell you how DSDM works and how it all fits together. And what we're also doing in there is we're trying to open up links to, if you're here, you may want to follow this link to other agile approaches, which actually could plug in here, or perhaps add extra guidance. So we've just created this little logo, which is going to be a link out or a link in. <coughs> could be seen as a deadly embrace. Hopefully it's a bit more friendly than that. So this is going to form the, the strategy, the base for our, our future strategy. <coughs> Just about going to last to the end. So hopefully some of you, I know some of you were at Dot's presentation this morning. Um, Agile BA is the first of the new strategic products. So when we have an Agile project framework in place, we are going to plug in some role-specific guidance. Say, right, well, you've got the core. Now, if you're a BA, what particular things would help you to be better as an Agile BA? Or possibly <coughs> other roles. Um, so we're also looking at things like a pocketbook on business. I know somebody this morning was flagging again, where are the business people here? I would love it that Agile isn't driven by IT, but just demanded by business. I'm sorry, we're not going to work any other way except Agile. That's the way it should be. So we're producing a guide for the business people. And it won't have any techno speak in it. It will just be, as a business person, what does this mean to me? What can I expect out of it? So what we're doing is we're recognising Agile in the more complicated corporate world. We're going to supplement this core, the Agile project framework, with role-specific guidance and supplementary um, guides, pocketbooks. We've also, um, you may have seen, I think Andrew's doing his presentation tomorrow. We're supporting it with other interesting things. So we have Agile Project, uh, Agile Project Management, which is a subset of DSDM a turn. What we're finding interesting is that we have people that are doing Scrum and realize there's a gap above Scrum. And they say, we're missing something. And I've worked in organisations where the organisation has carefully crafted the missing layer. And I've been standing on the side thinking, that's a shame because DSDM's already done it. So what Andrew's doing is melding Scrum with Agile Project Framework, uh, Agile Project Management, sorry. Um, so there's going to be, or there is a pocketbook on that which is on the DSDM stand. Andrew's talking about that tomorrow. So watch this space, there's an awful lot going on. So despite all being very busy at work, we're all also very, very busy in our spare time, but we love it. So, so this is the strategy. Um, it's very much work in progress. Hey, it's Agile. This is the way we see it at the moment. So we have the DSDM Agile project framework in the middle. 
And yes, we have very, very deliberately gone back to it is DSDM. It always was, but now we're, we're focusing on that more. Plugging into that, there will be a variety of things, role specific, looking at other links to other agile approaches, tailored guidance for perhaps specific techniques, specific problem areas, white papers, watch this space. There's a lot going on. And I think that's yours, Harry. Uh, talking about pocketbooks, there's maybe another group that might need one. I was, uh, some time ago, I was presenting uh, in the Netherlands at a conference that's called the Testnet Conference, and then we have almost everyone from the Netherlands, like five to 600 people, all testers. And imagine, when you're new to the Agile world and you're a tester, so there were five or 600 of them, they think, you know, I'm out of a job. I don't have a job, and they do Scrum. And when you look for a tester, you know, very specific, like the VA, it's gone. So um, from that perspective, when you look at what have we done, I think Barbara just mentioned quite a few stuff. We have tried to be agile ourselves as well. So when we started, we, we, we found out, okay, the way we work in whatever's called the waterfall, and I, I, had, I have often a debate with a guy I'm working with a lot, and he, he likes agile more or less, a little bit, not too much. And he said, yeah, you're always against the waterfall. I said, yes, I am. He said, yeah, there's some you know, really good projects using waterfall. I said, I cannot imagine one project where you really need the waterfall before Agile. I cannot think about it. Every single project needs Agile techniques. Maybe you don't have, and this is something that we know right now, maybe you don't have projects where you can make choices and prioritize. You have to deliver everything. Maybe. Maybe. Um, and I, I can, you know, when you go to aerospace industry or something, yeah, I can imagine. This, this, those are the things we have seen, we have known, we have experienced. The thing is, when you're really open, you're, okay, let's try, and not try on behalf of the client, but let's try to make it work. And it all comes back to the techniques. So next step might be not going back to, you know, huge silos of individuals like the business analyst or the tester. Or the, no, it's about how to get the things done that need to be done. And we still have a lot of work on the analyst side. This morning I was talking about, you know, get the best from the best, uh, which means starts with, you know, real, real smart objectives for every project, real good business analysis skills, you know, to drag it out of the client organization. So why are we doing this? Next step, um, again, I cannot predict where we are going. I cannot say, you know, this is, this is what we expect. Also, uh, last time I spoke to the other authors, we have ideas. And the ideas will be in the area of business agility. And business agility, when you look at it from that perspective, it's no longer that you have IT and business, but again, like I mentioned before, you have the solution development team developing something and a client requiring this solution that will help him or her to get uh, to achieve business objectives. So what we expect is that it will move to that direction even more and more using DSDM, using Scrum, maybe you know, new agile methods and ways of working. And there will always be the focus on the agile techniques we are going to use. We have a client and we have to listen to the client. We cannot think for the client, so we have to work with the client to make sure we drag out the information that's in the client, we can transfer it you know, to the development team so that they know what to do. And we have to define a process where we frequently, you know, with each other, review the evolving solution if it's going the right way. And when we are there and we have a time box and we have a money box, we will look for solutions you know, to make choices and to prioritize when possible. This is what will happen in business, in running organizations. I know organizations, like I mentioned before, that are already you know, run the Agile way. So episode seven, no, it's not yet defined. Maybe we should ask Steven Spielberg or something. I don't know, he has an idea. Um, but it will go in the direction of business agility because when you do Agile projects, you will, let's say, reach the natural ceiling of the benefits of projects. And the next step might be your project portfolio to manage that agile, and then the next you know, is running the business agile. Who is already 
in his or her organization working more or less agile outside IT and outside projects? Yeah, I see some hands come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, sure, cool. And it helps you to define strategies and to define programs and to you know select the right people to make choices. So when we are talking about innovation and sharing in communities, again, you know, let's do this as much as we can. And where we have a waterfall that's used, I think from you know 3000 BC or before until now, let's create together agile that's you now from let's say a manifesto in 2001 and two or three decades before until you know the next few decades and implement it as a solid way of working because I like the agile way of working more than the waterfall way of working. It gives me more space and more room and more creativity. So I hope it does the same thing for you and I expect this is where we are going. <laughs>